Hello everyone, happy Thursday. I'm Carly McGuire. This is Denver Zoo, Zoo to You Virtual Safari. And today we are in our Avian Propagation Center. So I could have teased you and tried to get you to guess where we are like I do sometimes, but you wouldn't have gotten it. And that wouldn't have been fair. So <laughs> let us know when you're here in the comments. We are with Keeper Anton today, who was with us last time when we talked about Charlotte, our sloth. And today we are talking about Quinn, our palm cockatoo and some fun enrichment and maybe an appearance by a special guest. So I'm going to turn it over. We're going to say hi to Anton and Quinn and leave any questions you have in the comments. All right. Hi, Anton. Hi everyone. How are you guys doing today? We're doing really well. Sparkle says, hope you guys are doing well. We are. Thanks for asking. So who is this? So this is Quinn and Quinn is one of our six year old palm cockatoos. So this is not a species that a lot of people are familiar with before learning about them at the zoo, um, but they happen to be the largest species of um, parrot in Australia, and they are the largest cockatoo species in the world. So wow. um, really big parrot. <laughs> um, actually, why don't we, uh, does anyone have any guesses on how much he weighs? Yeah, leave your comments. Let us know how much you think Quinn weighs. We know birds are normally lighter than we think because they need to be able to fly. So Linda, Sparkles, whoever's watching, put your comments and your guesses in there. Jenna um, says, my three-year-old asked if he needs a haircut or is his hair always like that? His hair is just always beautiful like that. So this is what we call a crest in a bird. Um, so he's able to lift, that, lift those feathers up or put them down based off of his um, attitude. You can see how red his cheeks are as well, the palm cock too. When they're excited, um, their cheeks get flushed with more blood and they turn more red, but they're usually a lot more pale when they're just in resting mode. Yeah, um, so we'll probably Quinn, see it like yeah, you fluctuate might, a little bit. You might see it change. Um, Quinn has really red cheeks, even compared to um, like his mom and his sister who also live in this building. So Quinn's making some interesting vocalizations that kind of sounds like people talking. Yeah, yeah. you, you saying some things? So. Like many species of parrots, Quinn is able to mimic some sounds and palm cockatoos have a lot of different vocalizations that mean different things. They're really, really loud birds when they want to be. Um, we but Quinn that. really likes the sounds of our radios. So um, not only the um, button that tells us that we're transmitting, um, he really likes our, um, our emergency alarm button sound. So if you ever come <laughs> to the zoo and you hear that early in the morning, it's probably Quinn. Um, and he also mimics people's voices on the radio. So he has a whole radio conversation um, by himself. He does the whole transmission button and he um, even clears the radio after he's done. So <laughs> That's sometimes so you, feel, you feel a little you. crazy. <laughs> no, no Harrison today. You feel a little crazy when you're uh, by yourself and you hear all of these things. Well, that's why I thought you maybe had your radio on you because it did sound so much like the weather <laughs> alert that we just got. So that is so funny. All right, some of the guesses for weight are coming in. We have 4.6 pounds, 12 to 15, five pounds. So what's, what, what's his You guys weight? are a little high still. Um, so Quinn is actually around 1.5 pounds right now. And 1. I had to do that 5? conversion because we use grams. Um, he's 714 grams. So 1.5 pounds. Wow, so super light. <laughs> so not too much not too much on your hand there. Then. Not, not too much at all. If uh, it was our eagle valor, um, that would be a different story. Not like our eagles or our <laughs> raptors, which can be quite heavy. Um, talk about, Joanna says, where is Quinn located in the zoo? So kind of talk about where we are yeah. and why it's a really important part of what we do here at Denver yeah, Zoo. So you guys are actually in a really special place. Um, a lot of you guys might have seen it when we were hand raising our flamingo chicks last year. Um, this is the avian propagation building, so it's a, almost completely behind the scenes. And a lot of people are familiar with bird world closing, but we have a lot of birds that we still have to take care of here at the zoo. Um, the avian propagation center is specifically made to house birds that are breeding, um, their offspring, and for birds that are retired as well. So um, completely behind the scenes, the only people um, that the birds who are not on our exhibits have to see are us every day, which is kind of nice. And, especially for our critically endangered species that we're breeding, um, it's really important that they have that, that space um, away from guests 
Um, so I think it's a really cool building. A lot of people don't know that there are animals mm -hmm. that just get to uh, focus on saving their species here. Yeah, we actually have a Zoo Tales we just published today about a similar kind of thing that we do over in Tropical Discovery with the Sulawesi Forest Turtle. Oh, that's and my favorite turtle over there. <laughs> yeah, and how we breed them and house them completely upstairs out of sight of guests because that's what's best for them. So this is another example of that. Avian Prop is also where we bring eggs to incubate <laughs> Um, and to hand rear those young birds. So it plays a really critical part in our breeding for birds yeah. um, here at the zoo. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like our, our <laughs> <laughs> it's our, kind of like our uh, home base for the bird department at the zoo now. Um, so we have our propagation keepers who are all trained in incubation and hand rearing. And the, the flamingo um, team, we also are based out of here and we even have some animals behind this building that we take care of outside. Um, along with the flamingos and raptors that are in our section. Yeah. So who, do we have other palm cockatoos here at the zoo? Yeah, so something really cool about Denver Zoo is we have one of the largest um, palm cockatoo flocks in the United States. We actually have seven palm cockatoos, which is a lot. Um, so we have Quinn, um, we have Dexter, who's unrelated, but the same age as him. Maybe we'll go say hi to him in a sec. We have Quinn's sister, Vader, and then Quinn's parents and Vader, uh, Dexter's parents are also here. And so we take care of them in, in four different units, even though we have seven birds. So Quinn is um, alone right now until he has a girlfriend. Um, he doesn't have a, there hasn't been too many uh, females born since Quinn has been um, hatched out of his egg. So he doesn't have a girlfriend yet. Uh, but Dexter paired up with his sister, oh. who's his, uh, his next door neighbor and his best friend. Fun. Yeah. Um, his beak is very sharp looking. Does it ever kind of get your hand when you're hand feeding those so, nuts? So Quinn is very, uh, very gentle. Um, and not all of the keepers can still work with Quinn um, the way that some of us can, which is quite kind of cool. Um, you'll see that he has that really big beak and we'll give him um, this walnut to break in front of you guys to show how powerful that is. Um, and Quinn, or palm cockatoo's beaks are actually the second biggest beaks of any parrots. Um, the only, the only birds that have, or the only parrots that have a bigger, thicker beak are the hyacinth macaws, which we have some of those in our ambassador um, program. Um, so pretty big beak. You have to have a lot of trust working with um, palm cockatoos like this. And the reason why Quinn is really nice like this is because he was hand raised um, here at the Avian Propagation Center six years ago. Ah. Um, if you have been uh, regular at the zoo and you've been coming for years, you actually might have seen Quinn flying outside um, in the past um, between... <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, I gotcha. <laughs> He's trying to like hold the walnut, eat the walnut, and pose for the camera at the same time. <laughs> um, so in uh, 2016 and 2017, I guess a little bit of 2015 too, we actually flew Quinn and Dexter in our Primate Panorama Plaza in a free flight at bird program that the bird department used to do. So wow. um, we used to fly Quinn outside. He got to do whatever he wanted. And um, so we have a lot of trust. <laughs> wow. uh, Quinn was one of the first birds that I really made a relationship with when I became a full-time keeper here at the zoo. Wow, well that's a great lead into Kristen's question. She says, hi Anton, does he have favorite people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Um, so we actually have a little like Game of Thrones joke. Um, we call people who <laughs> The palm, uh, the palm cockatoos like palmgarians uh, because they are like this, where they um, are really good with their training and do behaviors. And like I said, we used to fly them. Um, but there are some keepers that, for whatever reason, they just don't care about as much. And a lot of those keepers don't even come in with Quinn anymore. Oh. Um, but Quinn is really good with me. He's good with Kristen. He really <laughs> likes Mike. He's one of those propagation keepers. Um, but it's not the palm cockatoos do not treat everyone fairly. Um, <laughs> Dexter um, was hand raised as well. And um, we kind of have a rivalry going. You're either Team Quinn or you're Team Dexter. Ooh. And um, if Maureen is out there, we'll, we'll make sure to get a Dexter on film for you. <laughs> yeah, hashtag Team Quinn or Team Dexter. Let us know. Do birds have saliva to help them swallow these dry nuts? Yeah, so birds do have saliva. It's a little different than ours. Um, I wonder if you can, I don't know, <laughs> see his mouth. Um, but they have a bunch of different structures that help them eat. Um, but their mouths are a lot more dry than um, most mammals' mouths. Yeah. But they do have saliva. Well, I've been keeping it close enough so we can see how he sort of manipulates the nut and then cracks it using his beak and then uses the tongue to get it back there. It's, it's so down. 
It's very Maybe cool. Maybe fly for us. Yeah. Um, Jake says the best building. Jake <laughs> worked here and he just got a new job. So congrats day two. We're all really happy congrats. for you. Um, hi, Mark. He's one of our awesome volunteers. So keep leaving your questions. Maybe guess who our special guest is going to be when we go inside. Yeah. But here's Quinn sitting so you can see that awesome crest. I love that beautiful soft gray color. So something really cool about the Propagation Center is we live in Colorado um, where Quinn is from. Um, when Quinn would be naturally is Australia, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. Um, obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't get cold everywhere there all the time. And so the propagation center is made to make sure our birds have outdoor places, um, but it also gives them the choice of being able to come inside when they need to, which is really cool. Um, we're going to see if Quinn will fly for us. Okay, where do you, I'm going to stand and... back if that happens. <laughs> Uh, Patricia says she loves palm cockatoos, and Kathy says such a beautiful bird. Whoa, there you see him flying. Hi, Emily. We do have other palm cockatoos. We have Dexter and Vader. At Dexter and Vader, and then the other four actually don't have names. I call them Quinn, Quinn's mom and Quinn's dad and Dexter's mom and Dexter's dad. <laughs> yeah, their names. so we have one of the largest flocks of yes. palm cockatoos. Yes, and uh, the story of how Quinn's parents actually came to the zoo is kind of I'm um, kind of crazy. In uh, 1983, um, <laughs> US, yeah. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services confiscated a hundred palm cockatoos, um, and they asked if zoos would take care of those 100 um, while they figured out the legalities of those palm cockatoos. Um, they were coming from um, Indonesia, I believe, and after all of the legalities ended, which took a long time. Um, they didn't really have a place for them to go back to, so they asked if um, these AZA zoos would take care of them. Oh. And so Quinn and Dexter's parents have lived here since the early 80s. Wow. Yeah. They're 80s birds. That their their uh, yeah. crest totally <laughs> gives that away. And uh, Quinn is the last kid that was born or hatched here, um, but he has brothers and sisters um, in other zoos around the United States. Emily wants to know how old Quinn is. Quinn is six. He uh, hatched in March of 2014. Wow. Um, that was the year I first became an intern in the bird department. Aww. Uh, <laughs> Kathy wants to know how long do palm cockatoos normally live? So we actually don't even, we're not even really sure about that because um, there aren't a lot in human care. Um, I've read in the past that um, the longest one on record was like in his late 50s or early 60s. But they believe they're like a lot of the, the big parrots that can live um, a real long time. And like I said, Quinn's parents um, have lived here since the early 80s. And they were already adult birds as well. So we don't even know how old they are. Wow. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to, to well, maybe hopefully we, don't, we won't learn how long that is soon. But we just haven't really reached that um, spot in the United States with knowing those things yet. Yeah, and but, if you recall, when we did our... Uh, Facebook Live with our hyacinth macaw or our blue and gold, I can't remember which one it was. We talked about why parrots don't make good pets and that's one of the reasons macaws and parrots don't make good pets because they live such a long time and usually they fall to someone else after their uh, owner dies. Yes. So these birds are not pets, people. No, they're not really good pets and they have really specific diets. Um, we give them um, pomegranates. Whoa. You know, it's not um, easy to give your bird a uh, pomegranate every day unless you have a lot of money. They get um, specialized pellets. So this is a monkey biscuit. Um, the bags of monkey biscuits. Everyone loves monkey biscuits. Their favorite food is actually pine nuts. And even right now, we're kind of cutting back on pine nuts because those are a lot of money. Pine nuts are pricey. Have you been to a grocery store, anyone? Like um, and then something really cool, the reason um, palm cockatoos are called palm cockatoos is because of the pandanus. So um, this comes from a palm-like um, tree and it's a main food source for palm cockatoos in some oh. places. It's really oily, um, and we have to get this from certain um, certain places because um, it is a tropical plant. So um, we've gotten, um, we'll pay for distributors to bring it to us, but we've also even got some from the botanic gardens here in Denver before as well. You have expensive taste, Quinn. Super expensive, <laughs> and he's super, super loud. Uh, he's <laughs> already showed you how vocal he is, but he can get so loud um, it wouldn't be really fun to have this this guy in your house. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, oh, he's like, I'm done with that. Can we get him to make any vocalizations? So we don't really have any of his vocalizations on cue, like a lot of our animal ambassadors, because he just makes so many. 
Um, something that, oh, do you have your radio? Oh, I don't. Oh, no. Um, when we go inside, maybe we can show you. Um, <laughs> he loves that sound of that transmitter button, and that can set him off, and just, like I said, <laughs> it will start a conversation with him. Oh, Heck my God. When. We were laughing earlier, and he joined right in when we did that. Yeah. So if we get if we get a laugh in, maybe he'll do it. But um, I hear we have some other enrichment, possibly. <laughs> <You're Dexter. laughs> heard... Dexter's laughing. <laughs> so there's Dexter. He's inside, and he's laughing. <laughs> and he's posing. Oh. What's going on? Quinn said, the camera is off me. What's going on here? Get it back. So do you guys have any other questions? Yeah, everyone's just kind of regard like remarking how beautiful he is. And yeah, he's an amazing bird and um, it just feels so nice and um, it's fun to have an animal like this trust you and to be able to do some really cool um, behaviors with him and they're really fun to do enrichment with just because they are um, really smart and really strong birds. <laughs> Shannon is, is all about Dexter. She says Dexter kissing heart emoji like 10 times. Oh, you're going to go out to the ground? Oh, let's... Oh, hi there. <laughs> Do you see those toes? <laughs> These bright red toes are not for pecking at. <laughs> so palm cockatoos, the males are actually really known for doing a drumming behavior. Um, so they will grab a stick or ball up their foot sometimes and they'll tap it on things and it's a part of their... Uh, part of their breeding behavior. Um, so you'll see our palmies do that too. Yeah. Um, Kathy wants to know, do all the palm cockatoos get along with each other? So uh, palm cockatoos are not necessarily like a lot of the other cockatoo species that people are familiar with, like the white cock, the different white cockatoos, who a lot of people are aware will live in really big flocks. Um, palm cockatoos, even in their natural habitat, usually are um, found alone in pairs or in really tiny groups. And so we manage them as four different units for those reasons. So Quinn's parents and Dexter's parents have um, these really big outdoor flights um, just on their own. And Quinn lives by himself right now. <laughs> and then uh, Dexter is with Quinn's sister, Veda. Okay. Um, Mary noticed the Kong over here. She wants to know what we put in it. We can put all kinds of things in it. Um, so, like I said, his favorite food is um, pine nuts, um, which we don't have now. So right now, we've um, sometimes we'll give them sunflower seeds or peanuts, things like that. Um, they also get a gel specifically made for parrots, and Quinn loves that gel, and it's really healthy for him, so we can put that in there. Um, but pretty much anything. Um, like I said, we give them um, so many different things <laughs> to uh, play with, and. It, um, even if you look outside right now, you can see some of the uh, enrichment that Quinn had um, and destroyed because palm cockatoos love destroying. Um, so all of this wood, um, it looks like mulch. This is actually from sticks and logs that we gave Quinn and he destroyed and made all this oh, wow. mulch-like stuff himself. So they That's can, how uh, powerful his beak is. So they're kind of similar to Kia in that way, very we, destructive? Yeah, so we uh, manage our Kias and our palm cockatoos very similarly. Uh, because of those behaviors. Uh, Shannon wants to know who is the blue and gold macaw, and that'd be Tango, right? Yes, Tango. So he's an ambassador bird, so he doesn't live back here, but you might see him if you come on some demonstrations. Um, Emily is asking <laughs> why their parents don't have names, and I assume that back in the 80s, we didn't really, weren't in the habit of naming all yeah, of our birds. Yeah, so, so even to- Get away from my toes, Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Quinn. Oh, yeah, Quinn. Um, <laughs> So uh, even to this day, not all keepers are really into naming birds um, at the Avian Propagation Center. Like I said, a lot of these birds don't live in the public's eyes, and it wasn't always a thing. And there's some zoos where they don't name birds at all. Yeah. Um, a lot of us uh, keepers that are newer to this um, are really into names, yeah. and I love naming things. So. Um, that's why a lot of things have names now, but there are a lot of birds in the bird department that don't have names. I'd say about, I don't know, one third of the birds at the zoo probably don't have names. Most of our flamingos don't have na yeah. names. Like, There's just a lot of yeah, them. Like the ducks. <laughs> we don't usually name ducks. Um, we don't usually name uh, little birds like passerines, so like tanagers or um, little honey creepers and things like that. Um, we usually call them by a color or 
um, if there's only two of them, we say the female and the male. Yeah. Um, just because they don't respond and stuff like these high-profile animals. But all of our penguins, all of our lorikeets, um, a lot of the flamingos, all of our raptors, all of those ones have names. Yeah. We love naming them. We know guests love names, but like Anton said, if they live behind the scenes, it's not necessary for us to give them names. <laughs> Um, someone wants to know how we can tell them apart. Oh yeah, that's a good question. So um, when you work with them all the time, they do look different. Um, something um, for Dexter and Quinn that's really obvious is the, their beak shape. Um, Quinn has um, a very different beak shape than Dexter when we go see him. Um, and Quinn's feathers um, are also, I don't know, they, they're just shaped differently than Dexter's and then size. So Quinn is about 714 grams and Dexter is um, around 650 grams. So um, Quinn is a, lot, is a lot bigger than him. The girls are a lot smaller, their beaks are a lot smaller, and um, their faces tend to be a lot paler. Um, so Vader is very obvious if you go look at Dexter and Vader. And like most of our animals, the more time keepers spend with them, the more they can tell them apart. It's always gonna be a little tougher for the public. <laughs> Quinn is like, so much enrichment, so many toes to to pick at. I should have worn closed toes, that's on me. Um, let's see. Michael wants to know what country you can find them in. Yeah, so they can be found in the um, Northeast Peninsula in Australia. I think it's called the York Peninsula. Um, they can be found in Papua New Guinea. And then they're found in a part of Indonesia as well. And um, when I went to Indonesia last year for vacation, um, I saved a lot of the coins because a lot of the coins have palm cockatoos on them, which I think is really cool. That is awesome. Do we want to go inside yeah, and see anyone else? Now we got this AC kicking on. Did people have guests on our surprise? Uh, oh, guests? well, someone maybe you can answer this and reveal our special guest. Someone said, "What's your favorite bird?" Oh, I think that's impossible. I, Choose your I favorite have, child. You're about to see my other one. Quinn is. It's tied between Quinn and this other bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna literally crawl, crawl through this hole. I'm gonna do this as gracefully as I can, <laughs> holding the camera. And here is our other favorite. Oh! Come here, bud. It's Swift. It's Swift. So a lot of you guys have been following the story of our flamingo chicks, and they're about nine months old now. So you can see Swift is getting a lot of that pink color. He's a lot taller, a lot more confident. Um, he lives full time with our flamingo flock, but since he's been walking around the zoo his whole life, um, he's fine with coming and visiting his old stomping grounds. Um, when he was a baby, this is the hallway that we would walk him down every day so he could get exercise. So he used to do this all the time. We love getting to see Swift so up close. <laughs> he's getting so handsome, that like very bright Chilean fling flamingo coloration coming through. <laughs> He's so handsome. Yes, you are. Oh, he's like, who, me? Yeah. Who, me? <laughs> and then um. here's Dexter. <laughs> so you can see he's a little smaller than Quinn. It might be hard to tell. Or are you saying hello? Hi. <laughs> All right, so we've got some enrichment coming up. Anton's setting it up right here. Hi, Shannon. Yeah, you're looking at some birds. Here's Swift or Flamingo or Chilean, and then here is... <laughs> That's Dexter. Yes, hello. And then far up in the corner there, you can see another palm cockatoo. We have so many here. They're so beautiful. Hi, Deborah. Flamingos are your favorite. I'm so glad you were able to see Swift then. So here comes Quinn from the outside. So Quinn and Dexter, I guess. Yeah. Let's see this first. Um, I'm gonna unlock this and we hear my voice. Okay. So something really cool with smart animals like palm cockatoos, um, and we can do this supervised and unsupervised. If it's unsupervised, we do not put the tablet in there because they're like children and they're going to destroy it. Um, but if they're supervised, we can take tablets in there and we can watch Disney Plus with them. Fine. How cool is that? So. All right, so if this is not for you. You want to watch some TV? We all get it. Screen time is important right now. Oh. 
<laughs> there you go. So, today's Disney Plus is Hamilton. <laughs> Who has watched Hamilton? <laughs> Angelica? <laughs> Which one's your favorite? So Quinn and Dexter have very different personalities, and even the way they, where they like to hang out is often different. So it's kind of um, counterintuitive with what we were just doing, but uh, Dexter usually spends his time on the ground, and Quinn usually spends his time <laughs> up high. And even when we took them outside for free flight at programs, Quinn would, <laughs> that's Quinn. <laughs> uh, Quinn would fly up on top of the bathrooms, and Dexter would run around on the ground. Oh, <laughs> Dexter's kind of showing off for us. <laughs> Dexter, you're being so cute. <laughs> you're just cracking everyone up. Can you do that again? Can you do the dance? Yeah. <laughs> he really likes the goofy movie. The, oh. the, the in dance, he loves it. And Quinn loves Moana. <laughs> <laughs> Show us your big wings, yeah. <laughs> so fun. We all love yeah. that scene. The Skylar sisters. The Skylar sisters. Are you a Peggy, a <laughs> Eliza, or an Angelica? <laughs> and then we can go meet Vader too. Yeah, let's go meet Vader. Hi, Swift. Hi, Shannon. Both Dexter and Quinn were kind of making laughing noises, but it was definitely Dexter who was being the loudest <laughs> in there. Hi, bud. So, this is Vader. Oh, Vader's so little. She is little. Okay. Um, so, Vader is a lot more shy than Quinn and Dexter. So, when we're in there with her, we go a lot slower. We give her a lot of choice. Um, you'll see that her wing is... A little different that's why we gave her that that name and she came out of the nest box like that we don't know she was parent raised um, so this is Quinn's sister um, she hatched out in 2011 so what she's nine years old so big sis and so she's Quinn's sister and Dexter's girlfriend okay um, yeah I think it from here it might be hard to tell but her face is a little you don't get to see as much of that red um, her peak is a lot smaller, yeah. a lot smaller. And she's a lot smaller of a bird in general compared to these two big boys. So I can kind of see on Dexter now, can they move their feathers up in front of their cheeks? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they do that. That's kind of like their resting position is their feathers. For the F boys at least, um, the feathers go and like block their cheeks. Is that for camouflage or just? I have no idea. I, I like think it's just be... something that comes with being excited or like in resting mode. It's just like a, a thing that their feathers do, something like our hair would do in different in different situations. Does anything prey on palm cockatoos? So I'm sure that things try, um, but <laughs> of with, where every everywhere where they live, um, they probably can outfly those things. I'm sure they have to worry about um, birds of prey um, everywhere that they live. Um, but they don't have like a, and there aren't really many predators in like Australia, um, which is why Australia is the way it is. Um, anymore, there's not many predators anymore, so they don't have to worry about that. But uh, when we used to fly the boys outside, we've even had wild birds of prey um, get a little too close for us, um, <laughs> but they've been fine. And it's because they're so, they're so big and they're so loud. They do that and a hawk is gonna fly away. Yeah, who would want to get that close? Dexter's like, ooh, a camera. I'm so, I still want to pose for it. You're being so silly. Oh, hi. Look who's right, right there. <laughs> I keep feeling something poking at my leg and it's, it's all swift. Oh my gosh, let's see. Oh my God. Uh, how do you spell her name? Vader, like Darth it's Vader? Like Darth Vader. Uh, D-A-D-E-R? When she came in the nest box, her wings kind of looked like, <laughs> like a cape. So that's why she has that name. Very cool. Um, Carrie wants to know if she's smaller because she's female. Yes. Yep. Um, Quinn, and, Quinn and Dexter's moms are both pretty small. Though I'll say Dexter's mom is a 
pretty good sized female, but the females are always smaller in this species. Uh, Lorraine says she joined late. So these birds are actually located in our avian propagation center. It's not accessible to the public. This is a special holding area for birds we're breeding. Um, sometimes some birds that don't have an exhibit at the moment. Um, so Michael, they can sleep in here or can they sleep outside if they yeah. want, if the weather's nice? In the, when the weather is nice, we give them the choice. Um, we talked about it earlier, but what is really cool is we do live in Colorado. So um, we have these species that are from Indonesia and Australia, and we have species from Africa and South America. They can't be outside when it's cold all the time. And so um, giving them access and choices is something really cool about this building. Um, the few species that we do have on exhibit are the Kias, um, we have our hawk-headed parrots and nicobar pigeons, our juvenile saurus crane, miley saurus, <laughs> and we have red crown crane. So those are the species that you can see um, outside on the nurture trail, yeah. which is a part of the avian propagation center. Yeah, have make sure when you come to the zoo on our new kind of one-way system, when you come around the lizard lego, I think that's the best way to say it right <laughs> now, and past the lorikeet adventure, there's the entrance to the nurture trail, and you'll see lots of birds, and including miley saurus, our, our crane, our SARS crane, who just recently moved over there. Um, Emily is going to test you here. She wants to know if you can name all their birthdays. Uh, no, no. <laughs> nope. I do know that Dexter hatched in January of 2014, and Quinn hatched in March of 2014, and Quinn hatched in November of 2019. So I do know those types of things. Yeah. There are some birds I do know their birthdays. Yeah. We have hundreds and hundreds <laughs> but of birds, though. I, I'm, I'm one of the keepers that takes care of lots of birds. I don't work with the same birds every single day. So um, that would be a lot of birthdays. A couple yeah. couple hundred birthdays and sloths too. <laughs> yes. That's nothing, right? <laughs> yeah. Someone had asked about sloths and just an update. Um, there really is no update. They're still all three not visible to the public. And once we have a place for some of them, we will certainly let you all know. But obviously this pandemic has changed a lot of our plans here at Denver Zoo, including rehousing those in different spots around here. But Elliot lives back here, doesn't he? Uh, no, Elliot oh. lives over in our old feline building oh, with okay. a bunch Elliot's of our other ambassador okay. animals. Yeah. Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> they've, been, they've been scattered. None of them live together anymore, but they all live in different places. And last time we were with Anton, we actually saw Charlotte Greeny uh, over in the Flamingo Chapel, yes. where these guys spend the winter. Uh, Michael wants to know, what do the birds eat? We saw them eating a lot of nuts, right? Yeah, so the palm cockatoos eat a pretty general carrot diet of fruits and vegetables. Fruits and um, vegetables? And they're one of the species that um, we kind of maintain a pretty spoiled diet just because it's really important for them to have variety. Um, so we talked about earlier, they get pomegranate, they get um, a bunch of mixed nuts, and they love pine nuts, um, sunflower seeds, and the pandanus nut, which is um, not something you can just buy everywhere. No, you can't. Um, so all kinds of things. But they also all, um, like many other animals, um, I think we, we talked about it with a sloth, um, we talked about it with a flamingo, um, but we have pellets made for a specific animal. So this is called Harrison pellet, and it's a pellet that we give to most of the parrots at Denver Zoo. Wow. And they, I don't, it smells like nothing to me, but they <laughs> like it, so. Uh, Kathy wants to know, does Swift love people in general or just you? Uh, so Swift for a long time only liked the guy keepers that he was around, but um, Swift is pretty friendly and goes up to most people. Here, yeah. we're, we're going to bend down and see if Swift goes to you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Swift definitely knows and discriminates between people somehow, um, but he's been pretty friendly with people lately. <laughs> no? A uh, funny thing we have going is that there are a bunch of keepers who try to um, hang out with Swift when he was little, and they all have this picture of what Carly's doing now, where they're reaching out and none of them got, got Swift to come over to them. It's kind of like a thing. <laughs> It, sh it should be a meme. <laughs> oh, he's doing the leg. That's how much you're not going to come over here. You're just going to plant. Yeah. 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 He probably would like you. He does not like me. <laughs> so, 
just like all guys. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I think that was the last of our questions. <laughs> Uh, Tucker is wondering if he'll turn more pink. Yes. yes. Um, so it takes about three to four years for Chilean flamingos to get to their full pink color. Um, but even within like the next year, they'll be pretty pink. <laughs> um, that a lot of people don't, aren't really able to tell, but um, flamingos' eyes are also really different when they're younger if you look at an adult's eyes. Um, so Swift still has what we call baby eyes. Baby not, eyes. Not as, uh, not as dark as when he was uh, really little, but it's still not what... What will adult, adult eyes look like? Um, they're a lot more pale. Oh, um, okay. And, um, it's just going to keep getting lighter and lighter. The Swift has had pretty light eyes for a few months. I was going to say, they look really day. light. And in Legends older, right? Um, just by two weeks. Just by so, two weeks. Um, the differences we see now are going to be pretty permanent um, differences. If you guys see the two gray flamingos sit standing next to each other, Legend is much taller. Mm. And that's, a, that's like a genetic thing. Um, he's just a taller boy. Um, <laughs> Switch is not going to catch up to Legend. Is he kind of preening himself right now? Yeah, right now he's just preening, making sure those feathers are waterproof. Uh, he does it a lot. I saw him taking a bath earlier. It's pretty cute. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. Well, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much, Anton. We learned about Quinn, our palm cockatoo, Dexter, Vader, both of our other palm cockatoos, two of our other, not both, um, and then Swift, our Chilean flamingo. What an awesome day for everyone who logged on. Um, thanks so much for joining. Michael's wondering how old Swift is? About nine months. Old. About nine months. So he'll turn a year in November. Yeah. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining. I think this is our last one of the week, so we'll see you next week. Thank you to Anton for, the camera. for teaching us so much. <laughs> and we'll just say let goodbye. Swift say bye. Mm, no, he's like, Carly's still holding the camera, so no, I'm right? not going over there. Yeah, All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.